Welcome today to Transformation. I'm Mike Sherbinall. Excited today to be taking you down a journey. And as we journey together into the lives of men and women whose uh, experiences have transformed them, I am praying, I am hoping that as you listen, you'll experience a new sense of hope, a new sense of invigoration, a new sense of, hey, I want to seize the moment that is around me, regardless of your situation. I'm a person who believes in the amazing power and transforming power of the love of God as we come to know His Son, Jesus Christ. It changed my life, and what I want to do is take you on the journey with many other people whose lives have been touched by God's love, maybe people that you never knew about or people you've heard about and wondered, hey, what makes them tick? One of the things you're going to discover in our program is how the truths of God's Word intersect in the lives of people and bring about an incredible transformation. I want you to know that regardless of where you're at today, there is hope for you. There is an opportunity for a new beginning. There is an opportunity for a transformation. Whether your marriage has fallen apart, or maybe you're dealing with financial issues, maybe you're dealing with a health situation. I've discovered that God's power and His presence is absolutely more than enough. Today on our program, we're going to be listening to the amazing story of Kim Fook, known as the little girl in the picture, the one who survived the napalm bombing in the Vietnam War. We're going to go back to 1972. We're going to hear her story as she travels down the fire road, the road that actually was the road to her experiencing the forgiveness of God in her life and sharing it with other people. Could it be today that you need to experience forgiveness in a whole new way so that you can offer it to others? Stay tuned as we hear Kim's story and as we discover what it means to walk in the new road called transformation. Welcome, Kim, to the program. Uh, so glad that we're finally together to, uh, to share the exciting journey that you've been on. This has been a journey of pain. Uh, you've been known by many things, especially the little girl in the picture. But welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and take me back to that moment in 1972. What happened that day? You were nine years old. Yes, I was nine years old. And I remember very well um, that day we, as a child, we played together with my cousin. Uh, I remember that we, we just allowed to play nearby the bomb shelter in the temple. Just then, like children would play anywhere. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Then we heard the... Um, the soldier yelled for the children, asked us to run out wow. of the temple. And they say, if we cannot stay here any longer because they uh, dedicated the temple was going to be bombed. So I was running, uh, running out with another children. And I remember I just ran in the front of the temple, I got into Highway 1 in that point. Okay. Then I saw the airplane towards me very strong and very loud, very close. So you actually saw the airplanes coming in. Exactly. And then as a child, I just stood right there. And I just turned my head and I looked at that. And honestly, I saw the four bombs landing like that. And then I remember I heard the noise, boop, 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 like that. Then suddenly the fire everywhere around me. And if you closed your eyes right now, you can still hear it and you can still see it, can't yes, you? Yes, exactly. And then the fire burned off my all my clothes. But you didn't know that at the moment. No. And then I saw the fire over my, my left arm, and I used my right hand. I just wrap it up. Oh and my. That, that moment, I, I still remember what I thought. I thought, oh my goodness, 
that um, I got burned like this and I will be so ugly so people will see me different way. But at the same time, I was terrified and then I ran out of that fire. I didn't see anybody at that moment but fire and smoke. Then I ran out and I saw my brothers and my cousin and some soldiers there. Then we kept running and running and wow. running. You know, many documentaries have uh, chronicled your story. You are the goodwill ambassador for UNESCO. Uh, you have a, a very powerful uh, story on forgiveness, and it's a, an amazing story, and we're going to unpack that a bit today. But as you described the pictures, as you took me back, and we're looking at some of those pictures right now on the screen as we're bringing back some of the photography that was actually taken that day, you have also written your second book, and it's called Fire Road. And uh, yes. it's hard to say that and, and smile because it, it's a harsh reality, what you described to me, everything on fire. Here as the little girl, you're running. And who would know that that would shape your whole life? Kim, we're gonna jump back and forth in your story today, but people know bits and pieces of your story. It was a long road to recovery, wasn't it? Just yes. talk to me a little bit about the recovery because you eventually collapsed. One of the soldiers gave you a drink and then Tell me, you were taken to a morgue, and for three days you were there in the morgue. Is that not true? Right. I, you know, when, as soon as the, uh, I feel so tired to run anymore, so I cry out, too hot, too hot. And then I remember there were many soldiers around, and one of them gave me some water to drink and then they tried to help me and one of them gave me a pot of water over me and it looked bad but sound good to me because I lost consciousness. I didn't remember anything else and so, wow, well, now my story, I learned from everyone who was there. Yes. From my photographer, from reporter, from later on I learned from the doctor, and my mom, and my brothers. So the story is, uh, it was um, that I lost consciousness and then Uncle Oot, he put down his camera and he rushed me to the nearest hospital but as I was severely burned, so they moved me to another hospital. Then the miracle happened. My father, at the same moment, he arrived from the, the entrance of the hospital for the f first children's hospital. So they met each other, my, and they told me that everybody was expecting to take my body back to the village for burial. Then... But God that, had a different plan, didn't exactly. he? Exactly. And um, then my, my, my dad at that time, uh, he met his old friend who worked in that hospital and he begged his friend, Judd uh, really helped me. So finally I was transferred to another hospital as a the name is uh, the Basque Burn Clinic, where I got treatment. So I stayed there for 14 months, and I went through 16 operations in that time. So 16 operations in 14 months. I want to ask you to help me and to help our listeners with a difficult subject, because not only did you eventually recover I mean, you still deal with the reality of the burns. You have a lot of physical issues that you struggle with. Yeah. You're sitting here today, you look so beautiful. You always look beautiful. <laughs> Thank and you. And we joke about that, but we're so serious. <laughs> and yet underneath, you've had to suffer so much. Yeah. Uh, I know what you've gone through even to be here today to share your story. And I'm yeah. thankful that you're here. I think that you're a very anointed lady that can help us to understand how do we handle life's unfair moments 
Because there's many people listening today and, and they're not a victim of war. They haven't been burned, but they have very uh, strong feelings because perhaps they've been victimized by rape or abuse. Some people have lost their jobs unfairly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's been a financial meltdown or a marriage meltdown. The list goes on and on. When you were a young girl, when you're recovering, you eventually became the poster child for the communist countries that yes. you were a part of, and, and they took advantage of you, and that was horrific. Share with me something that has strengthened you in your journey. Tell me how you came to know Jesus and how that changed your life and how you've learned to handle the unfair moments. Pray. That's a long story. <laughs> I know, but you can do it. Yeah, but it's um, the beginning as a child, nine years old. Um, I know that at that moment, I was a victim of war. Okay. So for me as a child, I didn't think much. I just remember whenever the pain come, when I couldn't bear any longer, I pass out. That's it. And so that is a very di difficult at the beginning. But during the time in the hospital, for me, uh, I, I, I just remember everybody was look like me. Uh, and that is that, that my whole world. Uh, but then when I came home from the hospital, my totally family dis was destroyed by bomb, by war, and my body was burned. Uh, I, I have to carry on horrible scars. Not only scars, but the pain also. Were you... Obviously, you're sad, you're in pain, but what about anger? How did that play out? A, I remember at that time, I was very low self-esteem. And then I had to deal with trauma, nightmare. And I, I, I thought that I really unfit to be loved. Unfit to be loved. And then because I really expected uh, my, my friend come and play with me as a child before I got burned, but she just stood right there and she looked at me different way. And I, I feel so, so sad. And it means like I'm different now. I, I lost my childhood and everything. At that time, that fine. Uh, but I remember, yes, very difficult. But then when I was a little bit older, like I just really have a dream, a big dream that I wanted to become a doctor. So I focus on studying a lot, despite of all kind of pain and trauma, nightmare, uh, but I just focus, I have a big dream you were holding a doctor. on to a dream in the middle of it. Yes. And then finally in 1982, I got into medicine school. And wow, I was so happy. Then, um, but unfortunately, my happiness is, wasn't uh, longer. <laughs> it's a very short time. And so the Vietnamese government, they... Uh, Recovery, uh, uh, no, they uh, discover I am that little girl. You're the in poster the, child. In the picture, so now I still alive, and then you know they using me for the all kind of uh, foreign uh, press for interviewing, filming, everything like that. So that is uh, really the beginning. I was happy because suddenly I. I was, uh, you know, receiving a lot of uh, pay attention from the government, right? And, but then... Uh, you were a captive to them as well. That's right. So it was another unfair moment. Exactly. My life became, honestly, like prisoner with that wall. I was under controlling. I... The, 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 the worst thing is happened in my life that they cut short my study. 
I couldn't go to school. That mean like I lost my dream. Then uh, that moment, those circumstances, it built me up with hatred. Let's just pause for a moment. So you've told me a couple things. You had the physical trauma where you lost your dream as a little child. Uh, life was just taken away from you. 16 surgeries, that's, I can't even fathom that. And then suddenly you're discovered by the communists and they use you and for a few moments, at least people have drawn attention to you because you told me you felt very lonely, but then you became a prisoner in a sense without walls. You couldn't do anything uh, right. without their direction. How did you process those things in the context of your Christian faith? Because you weren't a Christian always but you discovered the love of Jesus and that changed your life. Take us to that moment right now. Right. I was raised in the Kaodai religion. All the names they put on the list, I prayed to. I had, I, I prayed too many gods, but none of them helped me, fulfill, satisfy me. And uh, because I, it is build me up with a lot of hatred and anger and bitterness. And I, I, rem I, I get think that that time in my life is a darkness, is a very low point in my life. Now, uh, officially, I suffer with the pain in my physical and then uh, now emotionally and uh, uh, mentally, inside and outside. And my deep doubt is in my heart. How can I deal with that? How would I find peace and joy to move on? I was stuck. I just, everything is for me was then impossible for me, that little girl and growing up as a teenager like that. So how did you get unstuck? Then... Um, number one that I just remember, deep down in my heart, I just want to seek. I seek the truth. I seek the answer. With all my question, why me? Why that happened to me? Like, seemed to me like I became a victim over again. And why I have to do that? And why I why shouldn't I die when they drop the bomb? I feel I'm much better. You were searching for the answer. Exactly. And then among all the books I had read, I read the New Testament, the Bible, and I found the answer in the Bible. What was that answer? As yes. we conclude this segment of our program today, take us to what that answer is. Uh, because uh, this is the beginning is a really... Uh, make me confused and wonder because I was really devoted in my religion, cow die. And when I read in the Bible, um, <clears throat> in John 3.16, God say, God so loved the world that he gave his begotten son for whosoever believeth in him, not perish but have everlasting life. And I say, in my cow die is a different. And then the more I read, the more question I have, and then I get into John 14, 6. When Jesus say, I am the way, the true and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And I say, what? It makes me confused, <laughs> uh, which was true. My religion or Jesus is uh, true. When, G uh, when, when my pastor explained Jesus coming to the world and then he died on the cross to pay for our sins. If anyone opened his heart to accept Jesus Christ as personal savior. So Jesus will come into his heart, bringing peace. Wow. 
and take away any burdens. You know what? When I seek the truth, when I get it, I don't want to lose it. And from that moment, it's just an amazing turning point in my life. The more I pray, the more peace I have. God answered my prayer later or sooner, but I got all. I pray, number one, I pray for wisdom. I trust and help me to trust, help me to change because I'm the one, you know, as the people look at me as a victim of war, for me now a second time being as a victim, different kind of victim. Inside and outside, I really need God's help. And that is how I move on from that point in Christmas 1982. Kim, that's a, a powerful moment in your story. And I know that there is so much more in your story to share. And I'm glad you're going to be back with us next week because we're going to take our listeners in a a little different path as you unpack some of your journey since then. Uh, An amazing award, the International Peace Prize that you just received in Dresden, Germany. Um, How God has taken your story of forgiveness and love around the world. And right now your new book, Fire Road, is being... uh, published in eight different languages. That's amazing. Our listeners can find it at Amazon. Uh, they can go there and, uh, and obtain a copy of it. But what I want people to hear more than anything else today is what you've just shared, how that when you met Jesus, simply it was a prayer from your heart to his that if anyone prays that they will hear. It's a prayer, God, will you forgive me? Will you make me your own? And when we pray that, he will hear that prayer And we can start on a path where we come and move past those unfair moments as we discover God's peace and joy in our life. Kim, thank you for being with us today. God bless you. God bless you. You know, we love you so much. And (laughs) every time I'm with you, I'm inspired. Thank you. We'll be right back. I'm so excited today to talk to you about something that has changed my life. Last summer, my wife and I were asked to leave British Columbia and move back to Ontario to open up a church in an old familiar building. And that's exactly what has happened. It's been the journey, believe me, of a lifetime. I'd love to invite you to become part of that journey. Are you looking for a church? Maybe you've given up on church or for whatever reason, you're just far from God. I want you to know there's a place here at North End Church. We're in the north end of the city of St. Catharines. Go figure. We're at 455. Geneva Street. We would love to see you come here. And part of the vision of our church is to create a platform for men and women and boys and girls to live out their dreams, to experience their kingdom potential, to live out what God has called them to do. We believe that God wants us to have an impact in this community, in this city, in the country, and even beyond that. So why don't you pray about your part? Why don't you come and join us any Sunday at 10 o'clock at North End Church. You can check us out at northendchurch.ca. You know, as we process what Kim has been sharing in her journey, if you're a little bit like me, I, I'm kind of taken back. And although I've heard the story on many occasions, because I've known Kim now for 20 years, I, I find myself being taken in by wondering what was it like to endure the uh, the fire that was burning within her from the napalm? What was it like to be dealing with the fact that as a young child, suddenly you realize that people don't want to be with you because you look ugly and there's scars all over? What was it like to be manipulated by a communist government? I don't understand all of that. But what I did echo with, with what Kim was sharing was that there was a rising feeling of anger when she realized that she was trapped, that life had treated her unjustly. Many of you today, as you're watching, you've experienced an unjust moment in your life, or maybe there have been many moments in your life. I don't know whether you have been a victim of abuse. Maybe you can be feeling like you're part of the hashtag Me Too movement. Perhaps your experience, though, is someone took advantage of you in business. I've talked to so many people in different environments, and they've shared their story. What is transformational for me is when I come to the teachings of Jesus and he gives us an example of how we're to pray in Luke chapter 11. And in what we find is the Lord's Prayer, we find these words where we're to say, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we ourselves forgive everyone who has sinned against you. Are you a little bit like me? I want to be forgiven, but there are times I want to hold on to what people have done to me. If you're holding on today to what someone has done to you, and perhaps what they did was absolutely wrong, and you can justify your behavior in your mind, I want you to know that you are trapped, and God wants you to be free. Here at Transformation, I want to help people to understand that as you come to know the Jesus that Kim talked about, as you come to know the Jesus that has changed my life, he truly can transform your life. You see, with forgiveness, it's not pretending that it didn't happen. When we come back next week and hear more of Kim's story, she's going to talk to you about a number of things. And one of the things that you'll realize is that forgiveness isn't pretending. It's not pretending that something didn't happen. Happen. It's realizing that it did happen. It's also realizing that forgiveness is something that is costly to give. One of the reasons that I'm a follower of Jesus is because he modeled forgiveness. When he was on the cross, he actually looked at the people who had put him there and he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. When I look at Jesus and I see the forgiveness that he has done, the forgiveness that he has modeled, I realize there is hope for me. And that's why Jesus taught his disciples to say, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Something freeing happens the moment we say, God, this doesn't feel good, but I'm going to choose with your power to release those that have hurt me from the harm that they have done to me. And the moment that that happens, when you take that step of faith and you pray that prayer, the power of Satan that he has over your life is broken and you can walk in freedom. You can walk in forgiveness. I want to invite you today to say something that is very simple, yet very powerful. It's a prayer that when prayed from your heart to God's, He's always promised to hear and can start you down the road to forgiveness. It's a prayer I've led thousands of people in. It's a prayer that goes like this, Lord Jesus, I know that I've messed up. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm holding a lot of anger and resentment against people who have hurt me. But today, in simple faith, I am asking that you would forgive me so that I can forgive others and walk in the joy that you have for me. I'm glad you're watching Transformation today. If you've prayed that simple prayer, why don't you go to mikesherbineau.org, the website that you'll see at the bottom of the screen. There's a place where you can click on a button that says, Talk to a Mentor. There are people there who will help you in your spiritual journey that will help you on the road to forgiveness the road that Kim experienced, that I've experienced, and my prayer is that you will experience as well. Thanks for watching today. Look forward to seeing you next week.